Okay, I have the camera mounted on the tripod and I also have the cassette deck standing on end so that way you can get a real good view of what I'm about to do. Now let me get my can of blow off and I'll show you what that looks like. Let me get the I got four cans up here on the shelf. Yeah, I'm sorry if you can't see me because I'm behind the camera, but I'm getting the, the can of blow off. Okay, here's one. Wanted to make sure I had a full one, or a fairly full one, so this job will work good. This is the uh, can of blow off. I'm also showing this in another video uh, when I'm working on a computer system as well. But uh, this is what it looks like in case you haven't seen the computer videos yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, cleaner and spray it in that little black switch that I showed you. So let me zoom in onto the switch, which is right there. And now I'm going to take the can with the straw on it and very very carefully first I gotta locate it uh, let's see where are we now I'm kinda getting lost here here we go right here okay what I'm gonna do is see I got the straw like right on that surface that little switch area right there and I'm, and I'm gonna be very very careful so that I don't uh, ruin any of the components because this uh, if you spray too much in here it could cause problems with the performance of the machine as far as the, uh, the components are concerned so I'm just gonna give it little sprays just enough to get something in there and then I'm going to simply move the record up and down while holding the stop. I'm holding the stop and now as you can see the lever's moving the switch back and forth just to get it lubricated inside the unit there and I would say do this about you know maybe 15 seconds, 20 seconds, just to make sure that it's lubricated inside. There. That should do the trick. And it doesn't take much to, to put that stuff in there. It's just enough to blow out any dust that may have occurred. Let me go close there and you can actually see where I sprayed. It's right It's right, right here. This is where I sprayed. So as you can see, uh, there's like a little hole there, okay? And there's a hole over here. And that's where probably all the dust accumulated, you know, from the unit being in storage uh, from, you know, from time to time. And, uh, you know, dust just accumulates inside those, those little areas. And that's what causes some performance problems on uh, certain occasions. But uh, <coughs> hopefully that will do the trick because what would happen is whenever I would go to record on this particular unit the um, the meters wouldn't register the way they should have. Either one meter wouldn't register any signal at all or both meters wouldn't register any signal at all and it wasn't because of the switches here on the front these switches were okay it was in the record switch and sometimes even the playback would be a little muffled because of the uh, the recording playback switch inside the unit was clogged full of dirt and you'd be surprised what what just a little amount of dirt can do to uh, degrade the performance so Preventative maintenance such as this is, is, is sometimes necessary at least, I would say at least once a year. Uh, those of you 
that work on this kind of stuff like uh, retro Chad and uh, some of the some of you others uh, electronic uh, hobbyists or professionals that work on this stuff um, if you have a, you know a better recommendation on preventive maintenance on this stuff uh, please uh, let me know because I like to preserve my equipment just the same as I'm sure you do too. Now, as far as the cleaning of the belts are concerned, that's going to be a little more tricky because what I don't want to do is I don't want to mess up the belt mechanism where I'm not going to be able to play this unit again. And with, you know, with the belts stretched. They're really not stretched, but they uh, they tend to get, uh, what do you want to say, probably a little bit dirty or dried out. Well, if they're dried out, that's when they usually crack and they break. But when they're stretched, that's when uh, the performance gets a little sluggish, like in the rewind mode. Fast forward, though, works pretty good, so I'm not really sure what's causing the rewind to be a little sluggish. Uh, although I do see some other belts in there. There's quite a few belts in there. So what I'm, what I'm going to do now, though, is put it back on its flat side, like it normally sets up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And I, I know to you other electronic uh, hobbyists and professionals out there, I know I realize I don't have an isolation transformer, so um, even just you, Retro Chad, if you can kind of give me an idea where I can pick up an isolation transformer, that would be good. And then that way I don't have to worry about getting electrocuted uh, when working on this stuff. So, um, I got it plugged in, and let's go ahead and power it up, and, uh, oh, before I, before I can do anything else, let me take my test leads from my uh, test amplifier, take them, I, I got these little adapters, let me show you this adapter, this little adapter allows you to hook in to computer systems from an RCA output. As you can see it's got the RCA on this side and it's got the mini plug on this side. It's sort of like that ca the, the cable I show in another video where I'm just showing uh, the uh, Panasonic uh, RX FT550 portable stereo. I'm showing a cable similar to this, except this is just an adapter, which is uh, a lot more convenient. That way you don't have to change cables if you already have a cable installed on one end. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate the uh, performance of this now in the uh, next video since we're probably running short on time now so uh, come back to part two of the uh, maintenance preventive maintenance on this techniques cassette deck and uh, you'll get to see the performance outcome of it